Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we continue our series on the local church. In this study, we will look at the biblical teaching on the Bride of Christ. We'll see that the universal church is the Bride of Christ. And we will also see the biblical truth of the universal church, also called the universal body of Christ, in a future study. But for now, let's join our study of the Bride of Christ. It's, uh, it's important to understand that uh, we are being called out from sin and unbelief. That's where we start. And uh, God is calling out a people. And that people is known as the church. But the church is also referred to as the body of Christ and, uh, and, the, and also known as the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ will one day marry the bridegroom, Amen. who is Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will live for him, uh, live with him for eternity in a place called the New Jerusalem. Amen. And uh, Revelation chapter 19, we're going to begin in verse uh, 6. And it says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Isn't it wonderful to know that we are not the only people going to heaven? Amen. <laughs> All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. There's going to be a lot of people. Sadly, there's going to be a lot of people who don't make heaven. And anyone who rejects Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will not make heaven. Yes. And uh, there's a place called hell. And it's real. It's a place of fire and torment, just like the Bible says. But understand something. If you go there, God didn't send you there. Amen. If you go there, it's because you chose to go there. Yeah. And you will not blame God for eternity, for creating you so He can toss you into a lake of fire. You will blame yourself for choosing to reject Jesus Christ and go to hell. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now look at verse uh, 7 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife hath made herself ready. Amen. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now that righteousness is given to us, imputed unto us, by Christ. Yes. It's through His blood that we are saved. His death, His burial, and resurrection is the gospel of Jesus Christ saving us by faith. When we believe on that, we are saved, and then His righteousness is imputed unto us. Yes. And we have His righteousness. We're clothed in it. Now read verse 9 with me. And He saith unto me, read it with me. And He saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Read 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And this is the wonderful truth of our future. As Christians, we are part of the body of Christ, we are the bride of Christ, we are going to be married to the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. I want you to turn over to Matthew uh, chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. And we'll see here in Matthew chapter 9 that Jesus presented Himself as that bridegroom. Uh, we'll look at verse 15. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 15. In verse 14 it starts saying, Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And then in verse 15, read that with me. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. Now look closely at what you just read. And Jesus is referring to Himself as the bridegroom. The bridegroom isn't a bridegroom unless there's a bride. Amen? Amen. Amen. You ever been to a we wedding where the bride didn't show up? Well, this, in this case, the groom's here. 
but the bride has to show up. That's you. You have to show up. The bridegroom has done his part. You have to trust in him, believe on him, and receive him. That's, you know, in a marriage. Uh, now, when I got married, I was, I was, I'm just Mr. Romantic, I have to tell you. Uh, some of you I'm, I, tell you I tell you my stories, and some of you men are going to be like, how can we keep up with that? <laughs> but uh, when I... <laughs> I'm the most humble person you ever met, Tom. But, um, and I'm here to tell you. So when I decided I was going to marry my bride, I, I, I took her to the parking lot at Stephen Berry's at the, at the uh, mall in, in Heath, Heath, Ohio. Now at exactly 10.10 10 a.m. on October the 10th, I said, would you like to marry me? They don't even have those anymore, Martha. <laughs> the good thing is she said yes. Amen. Amen. So not all of you can be that romantic, but give it a try. You... Now when it comes to the bridegroom marrying his bride, his, in, his uh, proposal is to tell you that he has died for you. Yes. He has paid the full price for your sin so that you will not spend eternity damned. Thank God. Jesus. And He is offering you more than just a mansion. Amen. A city. New Jerusalem. Yes. Eternal salvation. Yes. And all you have to say is, I believe. Amen. I believe. Amen. And that marries you. Now that is when you say, that's the engagement. 10-10 and then uh, the day of the Ohio State Michigan game, we we were married, and we had a re we had a reception with the big screen TV and everything. It's, it was paradise, it was, and and the Buckeyes won that year too. So. And now God gives you that gospel, and you receive, you know, you get a little ring, and that's kind of your engagement ring. Well, when you receive this invitation from the bridegroom, you get the Holy Spirit. He's your down payment. He's your guarantee that there's coming a wedding day. And all of us here today are looking forward to that wedding day Amen. when we are going to be called out. Now, us, the Gentiles kind of run this whole thing because we set a date. Everybody knows what's going on most of the time. And, uh, and people show up and they have a wedding. But in the, in the Bible days... The, the bride knew that there was going to come a day, but she didn't know exactly when. And she knew that the bridegroom had gone to prepare a place. But she waited. At any moment, he could call. At any moment, he could call. That's called a pre-trib rapture, folks. Any other view of the rapture destroys that. At any moment, he could call. And when he called, the bride had to be ready. Because whatever was ready was ready and whatever wasn't, wasn't. Mm -hmm. You had to leave things behind. Couldn't pack that truck with anything more than what would fit. Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so the bridegroom would call and then the whole neighborhood would go into fits and they'd have themselves a little wing dang and then they'd go off together as husband and wife. Man. That's going to happen to us, folks. Yes, sir. We're waiting for the bridegroom to call and when we go up, we get a glorified body. And then we're going to have us what we call a wing ding. The Bible, that's Greek. The, 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 the English is marriage supper of the Lamb and all that, but uh, the Greek term is wing ding. And that's just the beginning, amen? That's just the beginning. Now look over in uh, uh, Matthew 25. Let's go there, Matthew 25. Now you have to make the difference between Israel and the church. You ain't Israel, folks. Amen. Amen. Now, we are all the Israel of God because we have believed on Jesus Christ and are saved, but there still is an earthly seed called Israel. And Israel has not been replaced by the church. And in Matthew chapter 25, we're going to read a few verses here, verses 1 through 13. And uh, 
Israel is not presented as a bride, but as the virgin maidens that basically are attending the wedding. And in beginning in verse 1, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. So we're not talking about a marriage here unless it's polygamy. And it says, Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now I say that because false teachers will use this as though it's the church being married, and it's not. Verse 2, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Uh, when the, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Now people use that oil as though it's the Holy Spirit, which is true. But then they'll, they'll try to make this fit the church. Well, in the church, you're saved, you receive the Holy Spirit, it's a done deal. You're not going to lose the Holy Spirit and be oilless. But Israel is a different thing. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of people who claim not to be replaced with theology and claim not to replace uh, Israel with the church, and yet when they come to stuff like this, they do. And they try to make what happened with Israel the same as what's happening with the church. They aren't the same, folks. David, when he prayed, take not thy Holy Spirit from me, prayed it because it could happen. It can't happen to you. Amen. If you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit has come and you're sealed. Amen. The seal of the Holy Spirit didn't exist before the time of the church. Mm -hmm. And try to make everything match exactly, it's insanity. Right. It's just not, it's not the same. And here is Israel, and they have some, these are all virgins, they're all Israel, and yet some have the Holy Spirit and some don't. In the church, that's not true. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Right. Period. And that's how you know you're saved. And it says in verse... Uh, uh, let's start with verse, go back to verse 6. It says, And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now this, look, it isn't the bride. These are the attendants. When Jesus comes at the end of the tribulation, he comes with his bride and comes back and gets Israel. That's at the end of the tribulation. You put the church back there being raptured during or after the tribulation, you done screwed up your Bible. Yeah. Makes no sense. Now verse uh, 8 says, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. You don't come to me and ask for the Holy Spirit. You go to God. Amen? That's right. But this is different. This is under a different age. Right. And look at verse 9. But, he, but the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to uh, them that sell and buy for yourselves. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. Not to be married, they went to the marriage. And the door was shut. And we could go, uh, let's, let's go and read verse 13 through 13. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, he's not going to shut the door on his bride, folks. These virgins are not the bride. They're the attendants. And it says uh, uh, in verse uh, 12, uh, go back, read verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Amen. Now he wouldn't say that to a born-again Christian. You know, there's another place where Jesus said, Depart from me, ye the workers of iniquity. I never knew you. He won't say that to a Christian. That, if a Christian could be saved and lose their salvation, he'd have to say, depart from me, I knew you, but I don't know you anymore. He doesn't say that. Amen. And for what's to say, read verse 13 with me. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Now, you can could, you could apply that to us today as in, in the rapture. We don't know when Jesus is going to come. But the context that we're reading here is not about the church. It's about the attendants. The attendants. This isn't the bride, but this is the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom. Now let's turn over to Mark, a couple pages from where you're at. Just Mark chapter 2. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus prophesies of the church age as a time when the bridegroom is taken away. You read your Bible close, you'll see Jesus prophesied of this time we're in now, where the bridegroom is taken away, and the children of the bride chamber are friends of the bridegroom elsewhere. They're the same people being talked about. And this is before they became sons of God. After his resurrection and their new birth, they were in the body of Christ. You have to remember that. Uh, whether it's Andrew, 
Peter, John, any of the apostles, all the disciples, in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are not yet in the body. Jesus is establishing the church, setting the foundation for the church, and even gives some instruction for the church. But the church is not yet in existence at this time. So these are believers who eventually will be in the body of Christ as we see in the book of Acts. But at this time, they're not. And in uh, chapter 2, let's look at verse 18. Verse 18 says, And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do, thy, uh, do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but the disciples fast not? Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. There is the church age. The bridegroom is not with us in the flesh like he was here, and he's not married yet. That's where we are today. That basically has set up what we're, we've been under for almost 2,000 years now. The church is here, the bridegroom is there, and we shall meet in the air. Amen. Amen. Uh, turn over to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You're going to see here that John and his disciples are called the uh, friends of the bridegroom. In, uh, let's look at verse, let's go ahead and look at verse 29. It says, He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. And then that's when, that's the context when you heard this verse over and over where John the Baptist says, He must increase, but I must decrease. So at this point, Israel, including those disciples of, the, of John the Baptist, they are friends of the bridegroom. They are not the bride. Amen. Of course, later on in uh, Acts 19, we'll see they join with the bride. John's disciples, but all the way to chapter 19, they're still in total ignorance of what's going on. Yep. And then in Acts 19, John's disciples become part of the body of Christ. What does that mean? John the Baptist is an Old Testament prophet. Yep. Yep. He was not a part of the church. Right. We, referred, we uh, mentioned last week the, the landmarkers, the uh, Baptist brighters. <laughs> they try to put John the Baptist into the church as though he founded the Baptist church. His name was John the Baptist. He never founded a church, folks. That's right. That's right. Jesus founded the church of Jesus Christ. We're Baptists because we believe they're closest to the book. Amen. So we freely admit that we are a, a Baptist church. We don't put the name on the door or belong to a denomination. We're just saying we believe what the Bible believes, which puts us in the camp with the Baptists. Because I, that's exactly right. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus said of all the prophets, He's the greatest. Oh, He was talking about the Old Testament prophets. Yeah. So that's putting, you, you start to put all these pieces of the puzzle in your mind together. And you start to get the picture of the church. Where the church belongs. Don't mix it up with Israel. Don't bring Old Testament prophets into the church. Don't put the apostles into the church before they were in the church. They are in the church, but not before they were born again. Before that, they were Israel. See, that's, folks, that's rightly dividing. Yes. Dispensationalism is a big word, but you'd better learn what it means. Yes, sir. Amen. If not, you'll be blind as a bat when you read your Bible. Amen? Yes. Now, how many of you know bats don't read? Amen? Bats don't read. They, they make noises and bounce off the you know, wall so they can hear where everything is. We're, supposed to, we're not supposed to be bats. Where does the Bible say, uh, my bats are mine, and I will not lose any of my bats? Amen? You're not a bat, you're not a goat. Goat's butt. How, well, a Christians, how many Christians say, well, I know that's what the Bible says, but... Right. But, you know. Well, you're not supposed to butt. You're not a goat. You're a sheep. Bat. <laughs> and really, that's not really a compliment when the Lord calls you that, but we'll go on. Let's go to 
2 Corinthians, the epistle of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 and verse, uh, we'll look at 1 and 2. Paul presents us, which is uh, all believers from local churches everywhere, past, present, and future, by the way, we are engaged as the bride. We're engaged at this point. Your salvation is secure and, and, and it's sure. But the wedding is yet to come. So we are in a state what we would call engaged or betrothed is another word for it. Look in uh, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 1 and 2. Read that with me. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That's the, that's the ministry of the pastor of the local church. He is to preach the gospel, and when you are saved, you come into this church, and I am not the husband. Amen. I am not the head of the church.
During the fall season, while you enjoy the changing colors of the leaves and the cool, sunny autumn days, don't forget to spend time with the Creator who has blessed us with the changes of the seasons. Read your King James Bible, and you can study along with us by visiting bbfohio.com and by listening to Bible Believers Fellowship each Saturday at noon and every Sunday at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM.